Hello, and welcome to the Connection Church as we get ready for the start of our best week ever. Today's service is interactive, so pull out your phone, and while you're at it, download the TCC app where you can find today's connection points, as well as past messages and upcoming events available on all platforms. Now, let's welcome our host to the stage. It's time for church. Let's do this. What's going on, Connection Church? We are so excited that you joined us on our online campus as we wrap up our series, Love Rules. We have an amazing panel that I promise you don't want to miss, and I truly believe that you're going to enjoy. My name is Rowdy. I'm the student pastor here, and I want to remind you, if it's your first time, you're our VIP. I want you to encourage, be encouraged to text the word welcome to the number 512-359-3400. Like I said, you're VIP, and VIPs get free stuff. So I want to give you a free gift, one of Pastor Cole's books, just for saying thank you for being here. Text that right now. I want to encourage you, but then you can also scan the QR code that's on screen you get some information, want to love on you, just meet you right where you're at. want to also encourage you, wherever you're watching, whatever platform, TCC Live, Facebook, or even YouTube, we have a team of members that is ready just to love on you and meet you in the chat section. So whatever platform, look for the chat section, meet people, stay connected. That's what being in church is all about. We also have prayer requests available. We have a team that is ready to pray with you right in the chat. So make sure you're doing that, staying connected. Also want to encourage you again just to say that, hey, hit the share button. You don't want to miss what God is doing here, and you also don't want someone else to miss on what God is doing through this church. So go ahead and hit the share button, whatever platform you're on. I want to let you know, too, probably the most important thing. you got kiddos running around, parents. Look, go to ConnectionKidsOnline.com. Make sure to send them over there with a separate device, and you want to make sure that they're on there so they can enjoy their own worship with activities, games, a whole service ready for them that's geared towards them. I want to let you know we are so excited that you are here. We are ready to, to finish up and wrap up this series. You don't want to miss what God is going to do, but right now, wherever you're at, stand up and go ahead and get ready for worship.
This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like
Wow, what an amazing time of worship. We're gonna get ready to give and, and, and give through the Connection Church. But before you do that, I have a question. Where are my chosen ladies at? Let me hear you, come on. If you got to experience and go to attend uh, the Chosen Conference this weekend, let us know in the comments. If, if you don't know what's going on, let me tell you, it was an amazing two-day experience where women got to draw closer to God and grow in relationships with other ladies around them and build a relationship, a firmer foundation with God. We got to hear amazing speaking from Pastor Pam, the rest of the Girl Time team. There was amazing fellowship moments. There was group discussions, panels, all kinds of things. And then of course, amazing worship from our Connection worship team. Let me tell you, it was an amazing, weekend and i cannot thank you enough because i want you to know that your giving makes weekends like this possible women are closer to god because of how you give and your generosity towards the connection church that's why we always say we unleash generosity here at tcc there's easy and many ways to give you can give online at visionarygiving.com you can even text to give you can use the tcc mobile app and then you can also mail in your donation your tithe as well. Will you pray with me? God, I just want to say thank you for um, this opportunity that was this weekend, what you did in it. God, I just pray for the other person on the side of the screen. Uh, they would just be drawn to you through this moment. I pray that you would uh, bless uh, and multiply the tithe, the offering, in only ways that you can so that we continue to glorify you inside these walls and outside as well. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, my name is Kevin. I serve here at the Connection Church, <clears throat> and I just want to talk a little bit about my uh, year of singleness. I decided to go into my year of singleness. I just got out of a um, year-long relationship, and it was a tough one. And um, when I got out of it, my sister and brother-in-law just got married. And so when they decided to get married, I decided to go into a year of singleness. And going about that, I really didn't know how to be like intentionally single. And so uh, I decided to go to my pastor, Pastor Bobby, and then also uh, some of my friends, uh, who my roommates at the time, who were also uh, serving at the Connection Church. They really just kind of poured life into me about being single and intentionally about it. <laughs> And I think it was Bobby who really told me a lot in the sense of like, it's going to be a long season and um, don't like give up in it. And so it was, it, it was dry, it was long, but I think one of the biggest pieces that helped me out through that was getting into the word and really understanding like the stories of what single, like being a relationship with God is and just having a relationship with him. Um, one of the biggest scriptures that stuck with me was uh, Proverbs 3.24. And it talks about, uh, above all else, guard your heart. Whatever you do flows from it. When you find your heart again and you guard it, um, that next friendship or relationship you get into, necessarily you don't want to give your heart out to them right away. You give them little pieces, bits and pieces of it um, at a time. And so if something does happen, it's not a complete crush and it's not uh, the end of the world. It's just a breakup and you can move on from it or it's just a friendship that just broke off. Um, and so it doesn't hurt you in the long run. And there are times when you do give your heart out, but that's when you are engaged or you're married and you have to give those those commitments and then. And uh, that's where I am now is after my year of singleness and after that long haul, I ended up uh, being engaged um, to my beautiful fiance, Adriana. <laughs> She's a godly woman, <laughs> and uh, I'm getting married to her in three months. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Connection Church. My name is Bobby. I am the family pastor here today. Hey, check it out. If you're joining us online, just do me a favor and let us know you are here in the chats, man. We want we want to be able to connect with you today. Hey, if you hear anything uh, that's worth applauding or responding to, make sure that you put it in the chats as well. We're here to connect with what God's doing in and through our lives and through this church, and we want to connect with you today, and we're going to give it up for 
for you. You guys are amazing. Hey, if you're watching at our San Marcos campus, do we got anybody who can make some noise in San Marcos? San Marcos, San Marques, we love you. You're special. We see you guys. We love you. Uh, and then, obviously, if you're in our Buda location, welcome to the Connection Church. So good to have you here. If this is your first time in any of our locations with us, you are a VIP which means you're very important to me. We want to get to know you. You are a guest and we have a free gift for you. Make sure you do everything that the host told you to do earlier. We want to connect with you this week, but we want to let you know you're welcome here and we are excited for what we get to share to you today. We have been in this amazing series called Love Rules. It has been amazing, has it not? If you like Love Rules, put it in the chats, give it up wherever you're at. We want to help you identify some rules where you can win in love. So many relationships in society are losing in the area of love. The Connection Church wants to see your relationships uh, excel, have success, win at love, win in love. And today, as we conclude this whole series up, as we wrap it up, We've got something very special for you. We are going to talk on a topic that is not really popular in circles today. In fact, it uh, it doesn't re- it leaves a bad taste in some in some mouths. It it uh, is frowned upon by others. Um, and that topic is are you ready for it? The topic of singleness. Yeah. See, already everybody's like, oh, singles, I came to church today. We're talking about, yes, we're going to talk about singles because I believe that this is an important part, not only uh, for the singles in the church, but for the married couples in the church. Hey, if you're married and you have children, you probably have single children. And this is some great advice that we can apply, not just to our lives, but to the next generation as well. Maybe you find yourself divorced and you're single again. You were single, married, and now you're single again. We're going to hear, check this out, from three exceptional leaders in our church. I'm so excited to bring them on stage, but they're going to get to share with you just a little bit of their story to help us uh, grow and learn and what and what God wants to do for our lives through their lives. So here we go. Do me a huge favor and put your hands together and bring up a big church welcome for my friends Mackenzie, Danny, and Lance. Come on in, guys. And girls. And girls. So like I said, we're going to have a casual conversation on this topic of singles. I've invited three of our well, my good friends and the church's exceptional leadership. And um, I don't know, I just want to go down the, I guess the line real quick, starting with you, Mackenzie, and just each of you just take a few seconds, give us a little information, a little 411 on yourselves. Absolutely. Well, uh, my name is Kenzie. I am uh, one of the pastors here and I have been here my whole life. Um, And I I love the Connection Church. I love the church as a whole. And um, Bobby, I'm really excited to talk today. Uh, I've also long time single and uh, yeah, that's me. That's me. (laughs) (laughs) Danny, how about you, man? Yeah, so Danny, uh, child of God, husband, father, Texas State alum, eat them up cats, Uh, worship director at TCC San Marcos, Um, musician, teacher, business owner, entrepreneur. Yeah, two cats, two cats. Many, many hats. And yeah. Awesome. That's great. Lance, what about you, my man? Yeah, unlike Enzi, I've not been here forever. I've only been here four years, but I am so in love with the family that God has placed me in here. Mm. Uh, And I consider it an honor to not only be here, but just be in this family and uh, grow with them and also uh, serve them. That's one of my special joys. That's awesome. Well, hey, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, I'm ready. I don't know if you guys are ready, but here we go. Um, (laughs) I was reading the other day in Genesis chapter two, uh, the Lord was saying it was not good for man to be alone. And the scripture uh, is very um, clear on that we were created for community relationships. It's not good for us to be alone. Society will take that same stance though. And they will say, it's not good for us to be alone. Um, So you've got scripture and you've got society kind of like holding hands on this this truth. But um, I think society takes it one step further and says, it's not good to be alone. And as a matter of fact, if you are single, there's probably something wrong with you <laughs> because you probably would have been married by now. So uh, let's go with Mackenzie. Is society right? Is there something wrong with you? Well, <laughs> I think 
<laughs> That's a really great question. Um, admittedly, yes, there are many things wrong with me, um, but I think <laughs> that's not the reason that I'm single. Um, Come on. I think there's a lot, lots of things wrong with everyone, and if, uh, if that was the reason that people were uh, single or uh, that it kept people from dating, then there would not be uh, dating. Dating would not be a thing. Uh, we would not celebrate Valentine's Day. Uh, we would not have marriages. So anyway, um, what I'm saying is I don't think that's a reason that I'm single. No, I don't. Um, I do not either. Yeah. Uh, for me, being single uh, has definitely been uh, a choice of um, just not saying yes to uh, just everyone who has tried to lock eyes with me. Wow. You know? Um, <laughs> yeah. It's been, it's been a choice for me. And society would say the opposite. That if they're giving you attention, you should give I attention should, back. Right, I should take it and give it back. Okay. Yeah. Lance, what about you? <sighs> Worldly society is definitely wrong. Um, there's nothing wrong with me. Um, unlike Kenzie, I, I have been married uh, before. And I think even more was wrong with me then. <laughs> In that married state, then, then I feel is wrong with me now. Really... Um, I feel so blessed that God is using this time of singleness in my life to bless me not only with comfort in that state, but then giving me the time and the, and the motivation to seek out uh, what I should have sought out years ago, which is that most important relationship, the relationship that, whose nature won't change, a relationship with God. That's good. So what you're telling me is that you're single, but you're not eager to mingle. I feel blessed that that's not a burning desire in my life right now. I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. So we've got, we've got Mackenzie, current relationship status, single. Single. Lance, like, guys, did you hear that? <laughs> Put your hands up in the chats if you're single, guys. We'll get to you. Lance, currently relationship status is single. Danny, what about you? Are you I single? Absolutely not. <laughs> you have been, not. Danny has been married to Lori for how many years? Uh, almost, what is it, three, three and a half years now. Three and a half years, almost yeah. four years. Almost Give it up, come years. on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Danny is one of our phenomenal worship leaders in our, at our San Marcos location, uh, but his wife Lori is a powerhouse vocalist. The, yes. the, oh, yeah. Just leads with all kinds of authority with the microphone on stage when she sings. It's she. It's a powerhouse couple. Um, you guys uh, have also a little boy named Mateo. That's right. He's awesome. Yes. He looks just like his mother. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you were telling me that um, you guys did something pretty unique while you were in your dating season. Um, for a period of time. Why don't you tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so let me set this up a little bit with some, some backstory. Um, you know, we, we met at church, um, at a different church as part of worship team. Uh, so we, we were friends. We, we, we became friends pretty quickly, but then also uh, started sleeping with each other very quickly with no, no official title other than, than friends. Um, which was dumb, complicating, and hurtful as we were kind of moving through life, um, also trying to date other people as well. Mm. Uh, mm. So, um, you know, we, and we knew better. We knew better, especially being in church and doing, doing that. Um, but it, it was just not a, a, a time in our life that we were, we were ready to surrender um, that part of our lives to God. But so, you know, fast forward a little bit, you know, to where, where we started dating. Um, we were at a C3 conference back, I think, in 2016. You know, both, both of us felt the conviction to stop having sex, that we needed to abstain um, and, and wait until marriage. And which marriage, um, that is something we knew was on the table for us. So, um, you know, we, we, we talked about it. Thank God we were both on the same page about it. Um, and I don't really know how long we did it. Uh, we, we abstained because it, it didn't work very well um, for various reasons. So we, we went back to old habits. And, uh, um, and then, you know, while being in church, still, still continuing to serve, we were, I was helping out with Fuse. And I heard Josh give his testimony with Kiana 
and um, you know, and she, Lorianne was was there too, and you know, we kind of looked at each other and we were like, "Wow, we need to we need to try again," and so um, we we put better boundaries in place, um, and so that that and you and I'll be honest, we didn't do it perfectly. It wasn't it wasn't great. But we put better boundaries in place, and that led to a year and a half Come of, on. of us yeah. abstaining from sex wow. um, until until we got married. So um, yeah, so um, you know, and I, I gotta I gotta kind of preach on that just a little bit because yes, um, you know, it, I, I I lost my virginity really really young age. Um, I was definitely too dumb to understand what I was doing, and. Uh, you know, and so, so a lot of the mentality I had for a long time going through life was, well, it's, I already lost that part of myself. Like, I, what's the point of, of waiting now? Like, I don't, I don't just whatever. Um, and so, and I know there's a lot of people who out there who think that same thing, and you couldn't be any more wrong. Um, you know, because when you, when you take sex out of, out of a, uh, mm -hmm. Or when you put sex into into a relationship that's not marriage, you can often so many times use that as a crutch um, to to you know get through things um, and make things easier. But it's like when you're dating and things get get tough. Um, well, no, it's just imagine when when something's hard in your marriage, you're just going to resort to whatever's easy. Yeah. So what? So anyways, what what I'll say to that is. Not, I'm not telling you no, 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 no. I'm telling you wait, wait, wait. Come on. That's so. a good word. Yeah. Would you say that you saw uh, fruit or results? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What was the good effect that I it mean, had on it, your relationship? It really forced us to, to connect with each other in, in a way that wasn't physical. Like We wow. really had to look into each other's soul um, without relying on that, um, you know, which was at times painful. That we had to show parts of ourselves that we weren't comfortable with, um, and you know, we we knew very well what we were getting into when we said "I do." That's amazing. Yeah. Well, Lance McKenzie, you guys seem very content in um, the season where you're at being single. I want to ask you guys this question: um, A lot of times, I see relationships where um, their status is single. And because they're single, they must be alone. So they feel loneliness, depression, anxiety, fear, you name it. You guys don't seem to embody any of those characteristics. I want to ask you, how do you cultivate um, that contentment in your lives mm -hmm. with where God has you uh, in this season? Well, I or know how do you maintain it? How do you, how do you maintain your contentment mm -hmm. with being single? I think the key for me uh, is really being very intentional about seeking out relationship, but not like you're talking about, like a romantic relationship. Uh, right, right. As I mentioned before, it, it's really important to me, especially since I got a late start in life, to work on my relationship with my Heavenly Father. Uh, mm. I also feel it a special blessing that... Uh, I am put into a family by God, this family. And so being able to serve with and fellowship with the brothers and sisters in this family that he's put me into is also a really special blessing. Uh, I like to joke around with my connection group. Uh, you can call me a, a fellowship junkie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. What about you, McKenzie? Yeah, well, you know, you're talking about uh, being content in being single. Yes. Um, and I will say, I, I am content right now, but I haven't always been <coughs> content. Mm. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm a girl. Um, growing up, going through high school, and even starting off college, um, I remember, you know, feeling this pull uh, towards wanting to be seen by someone um, in that light, to be attractive to someone, to be wanted by someone, you know? Um, and I remember starting off uh, college and uh, really launching out by myself. And I had never felt so depressed in my life um, because I felt like I wasn't um, seen or wanted. 
um, you know, specifically in a, in a romantic way. Mm. Um, for me, that was very hard. Uh, the thing that <laughs> I've learned is that God is so faithful and he's so trustworthy. Yes. Um, obviously, I don't know uh, if there's any girls watching, uh, you've probably seen Netflix's uh, To All the Boys. Uh, I love that series, y'all, um, but it's, it's so fun. But I did have my own list of um, to all the boys. I didn't write them letters, um, just in my head and my heart. But um, I did have my own list of to all the boys that I had loved before. And every time, not to be weird, but every time I think back on that list of guys that I thought I, I could be with forever and ever, um, I just praise God. I'm like, God, thank you so yes. much. And I don't There's know if that's There's a country terrible. song, right? With those lyrics. Thank God for unanswered prayers. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's how I feel. I'm just, I just praise God because I look at these people and they're all great people. Um, but if I would have tied myself to them, I would yes. not be who I am today. I would not Preach be it, doing girl. what I'm doing today. Um, and so thank God for that. And, and let me say, I, I feel very content just because I trust God, I, I feel very content in being single. Um, it's not really something that I'm struggling with, but I will say I, I can hold two ideas at once. So I'm content with being single. I'm also not crazy. I would like to get married someday as well. So just holding those two things at once. <laughs> That's awesome. I love what you said about just looking back, gains perspective on maybe what you had in your mind versus what God has in his plans. Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Mm -hmm. I know the plans I have for you. Often his plans are far cool. off from my plan. Absolutely. And so just getting content is getting to a place where you can trust God's plans for your life, which means you got to trust his timetable yes. in your life. Yes. So um, all the singles out there, here's a little nugget. Just because your relationship status is single does not mean you are alone. If you have Jesus, if you have a relationship that's with right. God, that's the, yep. the key to contentment. Talking about, hey, looking back, some of the things you've learned. What are some of the things that, let's, uh, let's say you've learned about God in being single? This is a question to any one of us. His love is enough. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, like kind of reiterating, um, he, he won't say yes to everything you want. I, I've done, God does not work that way. Um, his will is going to be carried out, um, no matter how hard you try to go around it. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Uh, for me, I think one of the biggest things I've learned is, um, that, <laughs> that God sees me. He knows my heart. He knows the desires of my heart and yes. um, that I can trust him. Again, I'm talking about trust, but I can trust him with the desires of my heart. He's not going to hold any good thing back from me. He's just going to protect me from, uh, you know, the bad things that are not going to help me. So, um, yeah. Yeah, for, for me, this, this following after Christ came during this season of singleness. So I... I came from no God to singleness with still no God, but for the last four years, pursuing Christ has come into my life and, and come to really dominate what my values are. Um, during this time, I've come to realize that I have a God who loves me without measure, uh, which is hard for a human to comprehend that, that, that unconditional love that you can't lose. Uh, also, I've come to realize that despite what the world says is fun, God knows what is really good for me, and he really That's good. knows what I need and mm. desires to, to make my life abundant and full. And then also, step by step, uh, like you said about trying to obey, it's not easy, but you come to realize that learning more about God, developing that relationship with him, and then working it out through obedience enables all those other blessings and really is what makes life full and, and meaningful. Mm. I love that. Um, I was thinking back to one of your answers um, and just you guys both had said trusting God and getting content with him. Uh, if you don't know, Mackenzie is... I've known Mackenzie for almost half her life. I would say wow. 
10 years or so, uh, maybe 11. Mackenzie is by far the biggest people person I think I've ever met outside of myself or Pastor Chance San Marcos. But uh, (laughs) um, no, like she went off to college in Arizona, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Four years or three years? It was three. Three and a half, somewhere in there. I just want to know, you left your church home, you left your family, you left your friends, um, and then you go to a place where you don't have any of those. If that's me, I'm immediately looking for connection. I'm immediately uh, right. putting myself out there. How did you handle that experience? How did you endure it? Okay, so as far as <laughs> when I moved to Phoenix, as far as like romantic relationships go, um, the, you know, there's always this joke about getting the ring by spring. And then especially if you go to, like my school is a, a, a Christian college. If you go to a Christian college, that's so definitely a big thing. Um, and I, so I, but I was there, I was there, I was on track to graduate early. So there was almost this joke like, oh, you better work extra hard to get that ring by spring because you don't have as much time as everyone else. <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, I can't pretend like I didn't, uh, try to find a relationship or two that I didn't have my eyes on uh, someone uh, a time or two. But, um, you know, unfortunately, not everyone is looking your way when you're looking their way. Oh. Um, And so none of that ever really seemed to work out. I remember there was this guy, (laughs) there was this guy, he was a really nice guy, but he was in um, a few of my classes, he was in my program, and he found out that I was from Texas and so he would always ask me to do like Texas things. Um, like what? And this, is, this is really weird. I know, like what's a Texas thing? Like, but when I say this here, horseback like, oh. riding. Well, no, not horseback. <laughs> not no. But um, I remember one time he asked me if I wanted to go. Um, what is it like? Cu- country dancing, like two stepping. Two stepping. Yeah. See, I don't even know what it's called because I'm not that person. <laughs> he was like, "Hey, I heard there's a dance hall down the way. Do you want to go two stepping with me?" And I'm like. Um, actually, no, <laughs> because I don't know how to do that. Maybe you should find someone else. And it, like, it didn't click in my head that he was asking me out. Okay. But, then, but then a second time came, we were in class together, and um, my class was right before lunch. It ended like right at lunchtime. And I remember after the class, he said, hey, do you want to go get Whataburger with me? Which is just like the <laughs> ultimate Texas, Texas thing, to, thing do. to do. Yeah, Absolutely. Yes. And, Absolutely. <laughs> right. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, no, I already ate. Um, that's when it started clicking in my head. But things like that just didn't click very well for me. Were, um, were you aware that he was flirting with you? N- I mean, not until later. Not until I had some hindsight. Like, like even a day or two later, I was like, oh, that's what happened. What was his name? I'm not telling you his name. <laughs> if you're watching but he's online there, and he knows who he is. Really you know nice who guy. you are. Listen, if you would have asked her to church, you would have had her, man. Just hit oh us gosh. up. We can make that happen. Um, yeah. I think as I traveled through this experience of being out on my own and, and trying to figure out relationships and that kind of thing, the thing that really helped me was that I found my confidence in mm. Christ. I realized Come that on. I didn't have to have the ring by yeah. spring to be a complete completed to go on a completed college journey um i didn't have to you know all i had to do (laughs) was pursue christ and what he put in front of me um and that's really the only thing that ends up mattering for your life Mm. you know pursuing christ so that's so good Mm. you guys uh married have been married before twice um what do you what do you think that if you could go back and tell your younger self um, some advice, pre-marriage, single season, single Lance, single Danny, before you got married, that would help aid your marriage mm. that you are in, Danny, right currently or in the future, Lance? Yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? Um, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And because I wasn't a Christ follower back then, I have to admit that neither me nor my ex-wives were giving any place to God. And so kind of doomed (laughs) from the start there. Mm. But I think that, uh, you know, if if I would have listened to my older self's advice, I would have told my younger self to look closely at the example that my really strong Christian parents gave me. Um, You know, there had to have been a reason that they had a 56 year uh, successful close marriage. Um, It's funny, I... I was visiting with my sister and 
she's a few years younger than me and we were talking about our parents and how much respect we had for them and what a strong relationship they had and then she and I look at each other and laugh it's like what happened to us because we're both twice divorced and really once we got honest with ourselves we couldn't help but admit that it was the fact that mom and dad's marriage was centered around g their love of God wow. and that, wow. that that gave them the strength to get through the tough times it gave them the selflessness to attend to each other uh, and really made all the difference in the world. Absolutely. That's so good because until you know the love of God, you have really no love to share and show that unconditional love, the sacrificial love that comes from a relationship with you and your creator, right? Yeah. Um, to you and your spouse. What yeah. about you, Danny? What would you say to your single self pre-marriage? Like, hey, you got to know this in order to have a strong marriage. Yeah, I think um, if you do look at the bride of Christ, is a church that is a really perfect the the example of what you should be doing as a husband um and the w one of the ways that i really kind of came to learn that um was i got into a men's bible study um in my early 20s and that's whenever you I hear a lot of married guys in there um talking about stuff and realizing I have no idea how I'm supposed to treat women. Mm. Um, and uh, e even enough, I didn't even have enough respect for myself. Um, and so those, so if you're, if you're younger, I mean, even if you're not younger, if you're single, get, get into a men's Bible study um, and dive into to God's word, look at what Jesus is doing and um, talk to these wiser gentlemen because that's that's i was the youngest guy in that group at the time and um just just hearing these guys t speak and and their wisdom that really kind of changed a lot of things for me it's really cool that you said that get into a men's ministry like sitting to your left is the leader of our men is still yeah. men's ministry bible on the what is it the first and the third saturdays yep. of every month yeah yeah you guys meet what times do you meet Thanks for the plug. Yeah, we meet uh, first and third Saturday each month from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock. And uh, we, we have a great time together. It's always fun. Um, it's always touching how uh, building re investing in building relationships with each other and seeking together that greater relationship with God just really pays off. So good. So, hey, if you're interested in our ministry, still reach out to us at the church or find Lance and we'll get you connected there. Um, yes. Danny, I want to pitch you a question real quick. You've been pretty vulnerable with us. Let us know, uh, you know, some insight into your relationship with you and your beautiful bride, Lori, before marriage, how you kind of like um, expedited the, the, the pedal of the physical relationship. Yeah. Um, but... I was interested, were you guys, uh, did, were you physically active before that relationship or, um, or was that the beginning of your physical relationship, sex outside of marriage? And if not, how did that affect your relationship with Lori while you were dating? Yeah, so let's see. Um, it's a pretty loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> but you can handle this. Okay, so. Did you have relationship so, yes before your both, relationship both with of us did we we both have a pretty similar story in in our young very young teenage years of of having sex um very young um you know uh with with that you know we we brought in a lot of kind of baggage uh with some of those dumb decisions as as our younger selves um, you know, and one of those being like, you know, sex, sex puts you in a very vulnerable spot. So we had both been cheated on by our, uh, high school, um, people that we were, we were with. And, uh, so that brought in all sorts of trust issues, insecurities. And then, so, you know, bringing that into our relationship, you know, there was jealousy when talking to you, the opposite sex. And then, um, you know, of course, those bring up conversations and fights, looking into things constantly that aren't there, um, and just just fighting things that aren't real. Uh, and then, 
And then, you know, you eventually sort of make up around it, but then you feel ashamed about the way you behaved. Mm. And then this, this cycle begins where then you're like, well, they're not going to want to stay with somebody like me because I'm so insecure. And then they're going to go look for someone else. And then the vicious cycle wow. repeats itself. And so it's just like, you're constantly just dragging that junk with you in your relationship. That's interesting because, um, you know, the Bible says in first Corinthians six eighteen, flee from sexual immorality for every sin a person commits is outside the body, but sexual immorality is a sin against their own body. Um, you can't go anywhere today. You can't turn on the TV. You can't, guys, you can't open your, your cell phones. You can't go on social media. Sex sells. It's in society. You can't go uh, anywhere and not be bombarded with that topic. I, I'm interested, Mackenzie Lance, in your stage of life right now, how are you safeguarding that area of your life being single? Man, you are so right that we live in a, a hypersexualized culture these days. Um, I wish it wasn't so. I, I grew up in the, in the, if it feels good, do it 70s. And I hate to say, but I think it's, it's gotten worse as time has gone on in this world that we live in. And it's almost like a, no, it is a trap that the devil wants you to fall into. Um, and boy, did I fall into it over and over again in my life, uh, both pre-marriages, um, in building what were those marriages. Uh, they started off with immoral behavior, sex before marriage, uh, getting it all backwards. Um, and it, it really damages. Um, you know, and the more that I learn in my Christian walk, the more it just points out how dumb I was, uh, that I had it all backwards. <laughs> you know, when you study what God, well, he invented sex. In his context, sex is good. But the world says put sex first. And God says, no, that's the, the consummation. That's the end. First the courtship, <laughs> you know, the friendship, then the right. courtship, then the marriage. Yes. I mean, even after the vows and the rings are exchanged, still, wait more? Yeah. <laughs> and then it seals it. And mm. it's meant to be a seal. Wow. A physical blending, you know, two are made one flesh. But, yeah, like Danny was saying, gosh, if you take it backwards, it gets so confusing and so so wrong it just it it damns the whole process Mackenzie, how are you how are you protecting yourself in that area or what ways are you uh you know putting up measures yeah. of accountability be good well well that's exactly what i was gonna say i um you know as a, as a girl and especially as a christian girl um i feel like what we hear a lot is that you know obviously sex outside of marriage is a bad thing um but that kind of um lends itself to, especially for a girl, uh, it lends itself to us kind of, um, anytime you, you have a, an, a feeling like that, um, you just kind of push it aside, you know, like, oh, that's bad, put it away, put it away, put it away. Um, and, <laughs> you know, the more you feed the monster in the closet, the mm, stronger it's going to get, the yeah. bigger it's going to get until wow. it comes out and it, it devours Are you. Are you hearing that? Um, and so the thing that I would say is... Don't feed um, it, starve it. <laughs> well, you need to acknowledge your feelings. You need to be right. honest about... Um, those sexual feelings that you may have, um, be honest with yourself, be honest with God. And if you're brave and bold enough, you have someone that you trust, be honest Absolutely. with someone else. Yes. Um, develop some accountability so that uh, you are not uh, creating this monster inside of you. Um, that's, that's what I would do. That's what I do do. The Bible is very clear. Bad company corrupts good morals, right? So the Amen. opposite, the reverse is true good company will hold you accountable yes, to the plan absolutely. and the will of God. So, um, okay, let's get through this one real quick. Just real, uh, shotgun style answer. Um, I've been a family pastor for a little over a year now, but I was a youth pastor for like eight years or something. I've seen a lot of breakups and my advice always was in the breakup. You need to take a little time off 
in between you pursuing the next relationship. Because if you don't, you're going to be what's defined as the classic rebound, right? Like uh, relationship to, from to relationship to relationship. My question is for all three of you, um, real quick, how long is too long and what can you do to maybe expedite that healing process when mm. you're in between relationships? Uh, I would say... Um, <laughs> there's no such thing as too long. First of all, mm. if you're if you're in a rush, why are you in a rush? Wow! But um, get some people around you. Get some community around you. That's gonna help you heal. When I have a heartbreak, that's what helps me heal. Is being around people who can lift me up, support me, uh, nurse me back to health. You know. Great answer. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any specific time, but you know, the pain, the grief, the heartache, and let's face it, the guilt sometimes that comes after a breakup, it does take some time to get over. Um, I'm 10 years out of my last marriage and four years out of my last attempt at a relationship. <sighs> now, I said before, that, that was all pre-God in my life. And so the way I handled things was horrible because it was just in my own power. Since becoming a Christian and a Christ follower and pursuing that relationship aggressively by staying in the word and with prayer, um, I think it helps you to deal with that. I think that it more and more molds you. God, his spirit transforms you into the person he wants to be step by step. And I think the result in my life is that I like myself better. Wow. I'm more comfortable Come with on. myself. And I'm more comfortable with the kind of child that I am of God's. Satisfied. Yeah, I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. Whoa. I don't think I've ever heard a single person make that statement that I'm more happier than I've ever been in my life. It's true. That is amazing. I don't know if anyone is aware of the significance of that satisfaction. That's amazing. But it's a, it's a gift from God. It's nothing that I wow. would have figured out on my own. That's amazing. Thank you. Danny, what about you? Real quick. Mm. I just say, do you feel like you need to be in a relationship? If you do, then you're probably not ready for one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Good. Oh. If you feel like you need to be in a relationship, you're not ready to be in a relationship. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. All right. We've got to wrap this up. This has been so much fun. It has been a pleasure. Thank you all. You're amazing. I know I am just loving it. I hope you out there are just taking notes and picking, picking up. Like I said, this doesn't just apply to all the singles out there. Uh, it applies to your marriages. Um, it applies to if you're out of a relationship, out of a marriage, um, separated. This is, a, this is great stuff. That is all from God's word and what God is doing in your life. So thank you guys. Hope you're picking it up. I want to go to one last question. It's probably my favorite question I have on the list. But um, Kenzie, Lance, you guys have uh, just done such an amazing job of expressing your satisfaction, your contentment. I want to know what is it that you are looking for in a spouse because I believe that what you're looking for is what every single watching today should be looking for so Mackenzie let's start with you sure um so what I'm looking for the the Bible says don't be unevenly yoked right yeah right um and I think we think of that a lot in the context of like oh if you're a Christian you need to be married to a Christian right um and that's true but uh, for myself, and I really think for everyone, we need to take that a step further and really look at people's relationship with God and say, are they pursuing God? Not just do they believe that Jesus is who he says he is, but are they pursuing God in the same way that I am? Uh, have they given themselves to God uh, in the same way that I've given myself to God? Um, because otherwise, you're still going to be pulling ahead or falling behind from someone, wow. you know? And that's what I do not want. I do not want to be pulling ahead or <laughs> falling behind from whoever run I'm tied with. your race. Right. Don't run somebody else's race. Right. So I need to find someone who's running the same race that I'm running. Amazing. Yeah. Lance, my man, what about you? Man, I would echo a lot of the Bring same. Bring home. I would echo a lot of the same sentiments. Um, I'll have to say, though, that I'm not, like, desperate to be in a relationship or married, but it could happen. God could, could lead me there, but it would have to be with a woman who loves God as much or more, more than me would even be great. 
Um, mm. And like you said, that active pursuit, I would have to see that Christian fruit. And, you know, one pulling or pushing the other one is, you're right, it's not going to work. Um, you know, yoked means you're treading out the field together. And wow. so being able to, with, with, with a leader, who's, who's driving the yoke? Who's Come driving on. the team of oxen? Um, and so you would have to be in lockstep together taking it as a joint relationship as two made into one then going ahead and, and seeking the real good life that God has to offer so the 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 most I, I, what you guys are saying is that the number one quality is a personal relationship with Jesus is what you're yeah. seeking out Amen. in a spouse yep. Absolutely. that is amazing well hey I just want to give it up for you guys real quick Come on, that was amazing. Hey, we want you to know that um, you should be pursuing, if you're single, you should be pursuing uh, relationships where Jesus is uh, the priority in that person's life. But I want to give anybody who's watching today an opportunity. Maybe you're saying, um, I want to I wanna stop concerning myself with finding the right person, and I want to start to use this time in my life to be the right person. I want to let you know the yeah. first step that you can do is to answer this question is just say, if you don't have a relationship with God, you can have one today. I love this scripture in Acts 17, 27. It said, God did this so that we could seek him, perhaps reach out for him and find him. He is not far from any one of us. You may feel like you're all alone that no one loves you, that you're all by yourself, but I'm here to tell you and we are here to share with you that there is someone who loves you more than anything in this world. He gave himself for you. He sacrificed himself. He laid down his life in love so that you could have relationship with him. And if that is you, I just want to give you the opportunity. Would everybody just bow their heads? Um, if that's you, Wherever you're at, this is for you. I just would love for you to pray along with me. Um, this is to just accept God into your life and to enter into a relationship with him. Just say, Jesus, thank you so much for giving your life for me. Uh, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I thank you for taking my, si my shame, my guilt, my condemnation, the punishment that I deserved and bearing it in my place. I thank you that I am forgiven and set free and my identity is a child of God. I love you in response to you loving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone said, amen. 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 Hey, if you just, you just prayed that with me, do me a favor, text the word Jesus to 512-359-3400. I wanna reach out to you this week, pray with you. I'll also give you some resources that you can take as next steps in this faith with your relationship with God to help you grow. It has been so good having everybody here today. It has been a blast. We want to invite you back next week as we start a brand new series called Grounded. I promise you, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. So until then, stay connected and be blessed. Wow, what an amazing service. We're so happy that you joined us today. But I want to remind you before you leave, I want to give you some more information on ways that you can get connected. Maybe you're asking, how do I get plugged in on what is happening in the church? Maybe just the online campus in general. I want to encourage you, text the word online to the number 512-359-3400. We get you some information as soon as possible on ways that you can stay better connected to what is happening. Also, if you want to stay up to date on what Pastor Cole, our lead pastor, is doing, I want to encourage you, watch this week's Midweek on YouTube or Facebook. Get involved in the chats. We get to dive deeper in certain pieces of scripture and just learn more about what God has for us and just a midweek week encouragement. Also, his new book comes out, Pastor Cole's new book, User's Guide to the End of the World. It releases on Easter Sunday. You don't want to miss this. Head to our Facebook page to find out more information on resources that you can access to do that better. I want to encourage you. Thank you so much for staying in tune to what is happening here and engaged in what is going on. We can't wait to see you next week as we start our new series, Grounded, all about getting more grounded and firm in our faith with God. I want to encourage you. Stay blessed. Stay connected. We love you. We'll see you next week.